Welcome to Peralta Matters. I am your host, Jay Calhoun. Today's episode will be focusing on the College of Alameda. So, sit back, relax, and let's get into what matters at Peralta. At the top-notch facility inside of College of Alameda's dental program, students prepare for a career in dental assisting, learning the science behind providing a beautiful smile. We're very proud of our program. We have ADA accreditation, which is our national accreditation with the Dental Association. We also have the State of California Dental Board certification. I started my career back in 94 and was able to become the program coordinator here, department chair in 1996. So we have seen a lot of growth and a lot of expansion within our dental assisting program here. The program itself is three semesters and we have classes five days a week. It's a full daytime program. The first semester is our fall semester beginning in August, which are basic classes are designed for the fall. In the spring, we have advanced classes leading to internship. We start first at the University of California Dental School and then do our internship in private offices here within the Greater Bay Area. You can see behind me we have a new clinic which was provided through by Measure A Monies. We have digital radiography here. We also teach traditional. We have a new Panorex machine which is totally digital, which means we offer the student both types of techniques in taking x-rays. I don't think I really realized dental health as a impact on your whole body until I went to dental assisting school. So I started my career as a student and worked my way up. So this is a career that has many different levels and it has an exciting future. The employment possibilities are endless. The job outlook is named as one of the top five careers in the future. It's a wonderful career. It's very stable. It's very rewarding. We serve children at a very young age to our seniors. So there is a large age group of patients that we serve. We train our students to also work in our specialties for dentistry, endodontics, periodontics, surgery, orthodontics, and, and then you can go into insurances, you can become a lab tech, an x-ray technician. I was truly grateful for the Measure A funding that was able to enhance our program, remodel, build in new technologies for our students. We were able to actually put in a full working dental clinic, which is wonderful because it serves not only our student population, but it also outreaches to our residents within our community. It is a wonderful addition. It enhances our education also because our students are able to see a fully working functional clinic before they ever go out as interns. I'm really very appreciative of the administration. We have a very strong support base here at the College of Alameda for our students. You know, with the career being rewarding, not only for the student accomplishing a great task in education, but it's rewarding as an assistant. I come from the field of chair-side assisting. You're really helping people. And that person that is receiving the dental care from the dentist, from the office you work for, how good is that to help a person improve their health and their smile? For more information, go to peralta.edu. Welcome back to Peralta Matters. I'm your host, Jay Calhoun. We are now joined by Christina Toby, student senator at College of Alameda. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much. All right. Oh, pleasure. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about um, what a student senator does. 
Well, um, we basically support the president. The president does all of the delegating, and then okay. we vote on those decisions. Mm -hmm. We help allocate funds for clubs. We do a lot of the budget. We put on graduation. Mm -hmm. um, so we also make decisions. It's kind of exciting. We have a new constitution going into effect, mm -hmm. which okay. we voted on. And so now we're in the process of amending that constitution. For example, we had one of the GSA members come up and say, you know, hey, we want to make sure that sexual orientation is covered in the discrimination clause. Mm -hmm. How do mm -hmm. we do that? And so mm -hmm. that's sort of the thing that we would vote on to make sure that everyone's being represented properly. Gotcha. You used the B word, and that's kind of a, a, a tipping point here at, at Community College. When you say you guys vote or determine budgeting, what part or what portion? of budgeting are you are you speaking to? Well, we're given we are given a set budget and that goes it's a bra broken down and so we have a club budget, we gotcha. have okay. you know, we have the graduation budget. So it's hardly like they give us a check and we get to go to <laughs> <laughs> would be nice, right. but um, but it also is not part of the state funded budgets that we're getting that allocate how you guys spend your money. It's very regimented. Gotcha. It's very there's a lot of checks and balances that take place. Excellent. There's a lot of supervision on our end. We can't you know, unfortunately, hire interns to wash our cars. <laughs> so I know. I, I was ready. I was going to sign up. Yeah, right. But so it's very, very clearly defined where that money comes from, where it goes. Excellent. We suffered significant budget cuts, just like everybody else okay. this year. Okay. So we're feeling the pinch just as everybody else right is. On. And so our job is to really make sure and what all of that money is for is to improve the student experience so I like that. really what we want to do our job is to put on events so that students care about the schools mm -hmm. want to be here and having a good time that's really important to us we talked a little bit off camera and uh, your trajectory or your your path through Peralta is a little different or actually kind of more like a lot of working adults in this area where you've already got your, your degree mm -hmm. and you're actually kind of going to do another route. One talk about why you chose Peralta to continue that. Well, um, I did have a community college experience when I was 18. Mm -hmm. um, when I was 18. <laughs> <laughs> so long ago. I know, back in the day. Right. Um, Basically, I did something similar. I graduated from high school early, and mm -hmm. I did do a semester at the Sierra College system. So I had a really positive experience then, mm -hmm. and um, I had an internship experience that made me want to branch out a little bit more. I have a degree in psychology, but I wanted to explore more of a public policy okay. sort of option. I just right. didn't have those courses, right. and I really didn't want to pay for a second degree. So Peralta was an excellent opportunity for me to stay where I live and work mm -hmm. and to have an affordable education. Mm -hmm. And I was lucky enough to choose a place um, where they're putting together a really innovative new program, which is the violence prevention right. Right. like section that they're putting together and hopefully will continue to grow, right. which is right an excellent opportunity, it's so needed in the area, and I think it yes. really provides, I mean, it's after you complete the program, and sorry, I'm plugging my own program That's a okay. little bit right here, ahead. but after you complete that, you can actually apply through the state of California and get licensed mm -hmm. as a violence prevention officer through the state, which hmm. is a really excellent career opportunity. Right. It's it's really a powerful thing that they're doing. Kind of a real hands-on, you actually learn it, then you apply it right now. And it's now. all mm -hmm. in the community. Excellent. Excellent. You really, you have to, there's a set amount of community service and then you meet these amazing organizations that are here right. in the area and it's really, right. I think it's a very positive step to make it not only, it's a community college I think really gets forgotten in a lot of ways, hmm. it's a transitional experience by default. Right. Right. You know, you don't necessarily stay there, but I think it gives a really beautiful opportunity mm. for people to, of all ages and all of these different right. perspectives to right. come together and say, hey, let's really think about where we are in our communities for a moment and how do we take care of that and make that grow right. and right. give back a little bit too. Excellent. Yeah. So as student senator, what would you, uh, what would you say in the, in the years to come or semesters to come that you really want to see implemented or see your student government initiate at, on campus? I would really love to see number one students getting involved. Hmm. That's a huge issue I think always is that student involvement is our biggest stumbling block. Right, right. We um, we have four senators. <laughs> We're supposed to have 18 and right. it really, right. it's the same, you know, getting kids to vote 
it's the so, same. So, I mean, but, but what would you say to your prospective students? Why, what is the benefit of becoming a senator? Why does my vote matter? Why does what I say in this group of us matter to this bigger school or institution or district even that I go to? Well, there's a lot of power in students, and I think they don't realize how much say we actually have. And there right. is a lot of accessibility in the Peralta system that, hmm. you know, you have board meetings, you have student representatives, and this is all designed for the students. You know, this is for them. We're not all sitting around saying, That's you know, oh, what can we do for fun? Right. This is, right. how do we educate the most people possible and make that as accessible as possible? And how do we give them what they want? Right. And right. really, making it very clear to students it's a wonderful opportunity to express your views and to give that power back to them and being able to speak your mind to communicate clearly and make a plan you know mm -hmm. this is what we like to see mm -hmm. this is how we're going to get it you always are going to need those skills and right. so the sooner you become involved as an individual it's going to be a much more positive as a citizen yes. as, as a parent yes. as a partner you know right. as an employee so i really urge students hopefully to listen to that and find an outlet that works for you start a club you mm -hmm. know really get involved there's so many excellent people in this organizations and these schools take advantage of it get to yeah. know some people and right. make some good changes if you could sum or summarize your experience as a student center senator so far what would you say what would what, what would it be it's been very exciting, and I, I mean, that sounds kind of cheesy, but it, it right. has been. There's a lot of presence. There's mm. massive decisions that need to be made. Um, okay. There's really a lot of involvement, and they want to listen. The first thing I got appointed, and Dr. Jackson slipped me her card. She said, you email me, you know? And that <laughs> right. really right. shocked me that there right. was that, there's such a desire higher up to hear what the students have to say, and they really, want to provide the most positive experience and so that was really um, shocking to me mm. that to have that direct contact mm -hmm. with the president of the college mm -hmm. at my previous academic institution that just wasn't possible right. Right. and they're just it wasn't the same experience and so to have that transparency I think is really powerful and I was invited to sit in my, my first day. First day. <laughs> I, my very first day, they invited me to a meeting with Dr. Jackson and the transportation board about a free shuttle that's now being offered right, from right. Laney to Alameda College. Yes, yes. And there were AC Transit reps there. I mean, there were some mm -hmm. big names in right, the room. Right. And I, I you know, was sitting there with the notepad and, oh. I'm here, right. I'm, all right, okay, right, I, right. I can do this. And Excellent. so it was very, um, that was a really exciting segue to say, you know, there is, there is opportunity here if people are willing to take right, it. Right. So that's very exciting. Well, we thank you for putting the community back in community college. We're Excellent trying. Job. <laughs> Excellent job. Christina, thank you for coming on the thank show. Thank you very it's much. I great. appreciate being All right. here. We'll be back in a few minutes. The Diesel Mechanics Program at College of Alameda recently received another grant to provide free green diesel training. What we're doing with the CAA grant is training people to get into the industry as green diesel technicians, and you also um, get your Class A commercial driver's license. 75% of people who graduate from a program with a Class A driver's license get hired on the day they walk out of the program. This is my third semester. Uh, in the first semester, we removed the engine. Now we are putting them together. Here I learned the right way to work on uh, trucks and engines and how to do things right. What these guys are doing here is what we call in the industry an in-frame overhaul. Having been in the trades myself for many years, I wanted to make this uh, laboratory experience as real as possible. To the best of my knowledge, we're the only college in the state of California that has an in-frame lab. Better myself by coming here and uh, got the job of my dream. Thanks to the College of Alameda and my two fine instructors, uh, made my dream come true. And I make the big bucks. We've used this same program in several other grants. We plan to continue to use it and we're going to increase the offerings in this grant training. The next offering we're gonna do in this grant training, we're adding alternative fuels so we'll have in that program we'll have 
The latest green diesel will have compressed and liquefied natural gas and will also have combination, you know, the hybrid stuff, which would be the diesel and electric. If you think you can do the job, get yourself over here, get trained and get a job. And not just a job, it's a career. Welcome back to Peralta Matters. I'm your host, Jay Calhoun. We are now joined by Dr. Nathan Strong, instructor and chairperson at the College of, Sa College of Alameda. Excuse me. Dr. Nathan, welcome to the show. Thank you. All right. <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about um, the program in which you were just talking about, the DNA testing and finding that you've done with students that you're going to do in a couple of weeks, so to speak. Give our, mm -hmm. our viewers a little bit of information and background on the importance of this DNA study that you're, you're, you're conducting. <clears throat> Uh, yes, uh, initially I, uh, as a physical anthropologist, uh, I became very interested because uh, um, there are certain genetic markers mm. uh, that we all share that uh, can tell us something about our ancestry. Right. Uh, most contemporary populations around the world carry a combination of genes associated with Africa, Asia, Europe, and mm -hmm. South and Central America. Hmm. Irrespective of how we see ourselves at this point, <laughs> most of us are carrying genes that tell oh, us man. that our ancestors at some point over the last 50,000 years have lived in these areas wow. that produced children and had families. Yes. And that is both uh, fascinating and uh, uh, perhaps a little uncomfortable. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, many of us perceive ourselves to be unique. Mm -hmm. We identify population differences mm -hmm. as being associated with inferiority and superiority. Mm -hmm. So that has been the historical role of human cultures. Right. But when we look at it biologically, uh, we're all Bronze, one yeah. big family. Yeah. So we're not yeah. so different and there's really no legitimate reason to think of ourselves as unique or different or superior or inferior based on biology. And that's something that uh, I, I think is important. Oh, it's a good extremely. starting point. Yes, uh, more recently, uh, I've been invited to uh, uh, Amman, Jordan. Mm -hmm. And uh, as a result of having been awarded uh, Teacher of the Year Award and Outstanding Teacher uh, in the World. I think that's a little much, I'm not quite sure. <laughs> that's all right, we'll take it. How they to identify me as Outstanding in the World, but right. uh, <clears throat> I've been invited uh, to uh, attend workshops and mm -hmm. talk to uh, Jordanian geneticists. Mm. Uh, they have problems such as sickle cell anemia, right. whereas, right. Um, wherein uh, many f uh, families encourage their children to marry Wow. Cousins, second and third cousins. To avoid. Uh, and when uh, a couple who are members of the same family produce children, the probability that whatever problematic genes uh, each mate is carrying mm -hmm. will be passed on to the child, mm. uh, that becomes an area of concern. Right. So uh, they've asked me for my input. To return and conduct workshops yeah. and give them some uh, uh, advice right. uh, in terms of the newest, the most recent technologies mm -hmm. to do things like gene counseling, wherein they, they take genetic tests of both prospective parents hmm. and give them probabilities in terms of the children that they might produce right on. Uh, having uh, okay. specific diseases. Right. So I've agreed to return uh, and to make that contribution. Excellent. So we spoke about the technology, but I found, uh, as I usually do, that it's important to understand the people that you're uh, interacting with, whether Agreed. it's in a supportive uh, right. role or uh, as, as a recipient of, of help and knowledge. Mm. Uh, and um, I found that uh, they're religious, they're cultural, they're political uh, variables mm. that affect how receptive people will be to get this sort of knowledge mm. uh, and the extent to which they would be willing to act on this knowledge right. and or not. Right. So uh, I made a point of finding out as much as I could about the culture. I went into the, cult the countryside. I studied mm. royal mm. history. I studied 
as uh, I think uh, as effectively as I could in right. a two-week right. period. Right. Uh, the religious history uh, in designing uh, a strategy for conveying this information, mm -hmm. we want to make sure that we touch base with people uh, within the political, economic uh, uh, aspects of, of this culture yeah. that might have something to say because after we uh, increase proficiency in using and identifying the technology, mm -hmm. then there's the issue of will people be receptive to this to sort of information. information. Right. Right. Uh, and we want, I wanted to make sure that I was sensitive, that I showed respect for this culture, Smart. Uh, and, and that I communicated in ways that would be helpful uh, and not unduly problematic in right. terms of the political and cultural and religious right. feelings that people have. What are the, uh, the students at COA receiving from this groundbreaking DNA mm -hmm. testing, or the fact that the mm -hmm. actual, you know, exists. Are they receiving your your work, your Teacher of the World award? Are they understanding <laughs> <laughs> the, the importance of what you got going on? I don't on? mention specifically Teacher of the World. I sort of keep that sort of low key. Hey, we're gonna uh, put it on. We're gonna put it on. <laughs> right now. Uh, yes. Uh, first of all, uh, my feeling uh, for some time now is that we live in a, a world that's rapidly changing. Yes, sir. Uh, the skills that I teach and that hopefully they'll be able to utilize and becoming mm -hmm. employed and becoming productive members of a society, those skill sets change more rapidly than they ever had in any preceding hmm. generation. Hmm. So uh, the idea of change and anticipating change and preparing students to move into a, a work world and a society right. that's going through rapid change uh, is important. So right. I stress that and I sort of teach in this way. This is what is applicable and we know today. Right. Th these other areas are areas that uh, the culture and the economy and the science is moving rapidly into. Uh, you mo probably won't be able to get a job and rely on the information you've been taught here for the rest of your work life. Mm. Excellent. Uh, you'll have to uh, be prepared to change, to acquire new skills, to upgrade yes, sir. Uh, your skill sets. So let's focus on that in addition to the specific information that's applicable today. Right. So uh, that's, that's my starting point. That's a great starting point. Yeah. That's a great starting point. <laughs> uh, then um, we talk about the world being wide and diverse. Mm -hmm. Uh, we're not the center of the universe, hmm. although I have an Uncle Percy in New York who thought he was. <laughs> don't, don't put that in. <laughs> uh, and so uh, helping, uh, cooperating with other people who mm. may have different perspectives, mm. different needs, mm. uh, that may see themselves in w ways that you might not see or appreciate them. Right. That's an important part of functioning effectively in a changing new world. Agreed. So okay. we speak about the process of change. As I teach them what is applicable today, mm -hmm. it's always against the backdrop of being able to anticipate and being able to adjust and to adapt as they move through right. their, their uh, adulthood and their work lives. Right on. So that's something else that, that I teach. And in this context, genetics is sort of a cutting edge technology. Hmm. Uh, as I've asked other faculty to uh, participate uh, in this program, mm -hmm. I've approached people in psychology, people in chemistry, people in biology, uh, because the new technologies uh, require knowledge in all of these disciplines. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So right. they're not, uh, uh, what I want to emphasize is that they, if they're only uh, uh, educated and prepared in one narrow way, mm -hmm. they won't have the range of skills they need mm -hmm. uh, in order to be successful on a humanistic level or, yeah. or, or um, uh, uh, <coughs> on a technological, technological level. Yes, sir. So uh, I, I work very hard in, in this way, uh, asking them mm -hmm. to participate uh, in the Ancestral DNA mm. project uh, has, I think, uh, uh, resulted in them being very excited about the right. process of learning right. uh, because we take their DNA samples, mm -hmm. we have them analyzed. Mm -hmm. We use three markers, uh, mitochondrial, autosomal, and Y chromosome markers, okay. all three of which, uh, when we acquire a sample from them and mm -hmm. test them out, 
these markers have a biogeographic influence. They tell wow. us where our ancestors have lived wow. over the last 50,000 years. As it turns out, all modern human beings uh, uh, emerged from families in Africa. Right. And uh, at about 50,000 years ago, they started to migrate for various reasons mm -hmm. uh, into South Asia, Central Asia, mm -hmm. uh, North Africa. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them continued, these groups continued north uh, into uh, uh, Central and Northern Europe. Right. Some migrated uh, uh, east across the Bering Straits into the Americas. Most American Indian populations have Central Asian DNA markers. Wow. Wow. So this is both the source of interest and fascination. Yes, sir. Uh, it's uh, imparting knowledge that various students uh, have to uh, perhaps struggle with a little bit. Mm. Uh, mm. The idea that when I'm tested, I show 3% uh, South this Asian markers. Yeah. Uh, I show 5% uh, Central uh, uh, American mm. markers. Mm -hmm. My remaining genetic markers are from Africa. Right. Uh, that's something that's rather new to students, <laughs> and it breaks down the barriers of, um, of cultural and racial yes, separateness yes, or does. uniqueness. Yes, it does. Uh, and um, uh, hopefully this will uh, entice people to consider their fellow human beings in a way that they might not <laughs> traditionally have. Right, right. Because we are part of each other. That's a great one. Yeah. Uh, we're meant to help each other, to interact to have compassion and empathy for each other. Mm -hmm. And if we can recognize through science that we're really not so different after all, I think that's a valuable educational moment it sure for is. students. It sure is. I want to congratulate you on your award, Dr. Song, and, and mm -hmm. continue what you're mm -hmm. doing because it's, it's so vital. It's so vital. Oh, thank Appreciate you. It. Thank Appreciate you it. Very, Thanks very, for coming very on much. the show, sir. Thank you. All right. <laughs> we'll be right back after this. I'm Congresswoman Barbara Lee. Join me in watching Peralta TV. I want to thank you for watching Peralta Matters. I also want to thank both of our guests from the College of Alameda. If you missed any of this episode or any of our previous episodes, please visit us at YouTube forward slash Peralta TV. Until then, do something that matters. Peralta TV, programs that matter. Peralta TV.